How's it going? It is finally cooled down in Athens, Georgia. It's 2 p.m. on Sunday and it is only 85 out and there's a light breeze. I'm in heaven. Been doing some thinking today so I thought I'd hop on and talk to you a little bit. A little bit off topic, not small business related. More like current trends, current thoughts that are out there right now from a lot of really smart people that I don't really agree with. So I'm gonna tell you because I got nobody else to talk to it about right now. A lot of smart people online for the past, I'd say six months really, have been bashing the American higher education system. College isn't worth it, lectures are free online, it's all antiquated, it's not up to date, you don't learn anything, blah, 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 blah. And yes, that's true. I learned more in three months running my small business than I did in four years at college. But is college worth it is the question. You have so many smart people online talking about college this, college that, higher education is dead, college campuses are dead. And I agree that the small liberal arts schools in the United States are in trouble. I agree that they're never gonna be the same and I agree that the value is not really there. I would not go to a small 3,000 student university for $40,000 a year. You don't get the network, you don't get the connections out of school, and it doesn't really stand out on a resume. I looked at college when I went to college as a fallback plan. Well, it was the plan for a while, and then senior year it was the fallback plan when I launched my company. But the question is, is the higher education system gonna be gone for good? There's, I mean, we are in the college storage business. We've interacted closely with a lot of admins at many universities over the past six, eight months since COVID started. And yes, it's in shambles. You're reading online about how schools are getting sent home. Uh, COVID is everywhere. Here in Athens, Georgia at UGA, there's hundreds of cases a day. Um, in Ithaca, college kids are just posting all over Reddit about how horrible it is at Cornell and how they can't do anything and they can't live. and. Um, it's hard. It's hard mentally hard. College is mentally hard enough. When I was at, Cor at Cornell, we had a ton of suicides, a, a huge problem with mental health. This is not helping that. But the big question here is, is college worth it? And to me, yes, it is absolutely worth it. I think about what I got out of college. I got to meet my wife. She's one in a million. Meeting a significant other that is a great teammate and a supporter and somebody who makes you the best version of yourself is what a, a, a respected mentor of mine told me is the most important part of life. And I have not ever married somebody who was not those things. So I don't really know the other side of the coin, but I do know what it's like to have a supportive significant other that makes me the best version of myself and helps me in more ways than I could ever imagine. And I met her there. Unbelievable luck that I wouldn't have happened if I st would have stayed in small town, Southern Indiana. Another thing is I met my business partner there. Dan, a spectacular dude who compliments me, adds a ton of value to my life and my business, and also encourages me to become the best version of myself. I met three amazing mentors there, uh, a, a college, two college coaches and one college professor, professor that really shaped my life and were second, second, third, and fourth fathers to me when it came to launching my business, growing my career, um, succeeding in track and field. And then there was the athletic side of college. Um, I don't talk about my, my athletic career often on this podcast or anywhere really, but I was the last guy recruited to run track and field at Cornell. I, Cornell sends letters um, to the top 12 people at the Indiana State Championship every year in every event. And if you hit a certain GPA mark when, the, when you fill out the little return slip, then they, the coach gives you a call and that's part of their recruiting. Well, on the last hurdle, the last race of my career, my junior, last race of junior year, the guy in front of me fell on his face. The guy who was supposed to win the race fell on his face. His name was Logan Griffith. He fell on his face and he did not finish the race at the state championship. So I moved from 12th to 11th and got that letter from Cornell. And, you know, 
six months later, I'm there. I'm the last guy recruited. I had the lowest SAT score at Cornell, but I had a ton of success in college. I, the, my freshman year, I kind of grew up. I matured. I couldn't grow a beard in high school at all, and I was 165 pounds when I graduated high school, and then I grew up to 190 pounds and got a lot of muscle, and I got a lot faster, and I got good at track, and I won an Ivy League championship my freshman year. And then by the time I graduated my senior year, I was an All-American twice, and I held four school records at Cornell. I had won 10-plus Ivy League championships, and I was on my way to go to the Olympic trials. Well, that wouldn't have happened without the college system. And, and what I learned doing the decathlon, which was my event later on in college, it's 10 events over two days, and it's a mentally grueling ta taxing event. And I learned two things. Number one, it's about competition when you choose to do something. Not very many people do decathlon. So me, as a moderately slow, uh, a moderately fast person who can jump moderately high and far and throw something moderately far, um, it was the best option I had to be world class at anything because not very many people do it. I learned about picking something that is not as competitive. If I was going to be, try to be the best 100 meter dash runner or the best quarterback in the country, everybody wants to do those things. Everybody does do those things. It's much, much more competitive if you want to go and do that. So I learned, I learned in the decathlon to you know, choose something where you have a high likelihood of success, even if it's hard and not fun, and not sexy. And I also learned how to recover from failure. In the decathlon, you do 10 events, and you're never going to do 10 events well. So on the first day, if you have a bad long jump, you have no choice. I mean, I watched folks who were competing against me. They'd have a bad event, and they would just fail mentally. They wouldn't be able to recover for the next event. They wouldn't be able to ever get back those legs. Um, they wouldn't get their head in the right place to continue on and do well. And in me, on the other hand, I learned really quickly that, hey, look, this is low stakes. I don't this is not going to affect my life. How I do in this meet, that meet, any meet is not going to affect my life, anything about it. So I'm just going to go out there and do my best and try to recover from this stuff. Obviously, I cared, and obviously it hurt me if I, if I did poorly. But what it did is it taught me how to fail and recover and get back on my feet and be able to have a strong head for when the going gets tough. And that was absolutely invaluable. Wouldn't have had that experience without college. I also learned how to be who I was. I grew up, right? Um, when I graduated high school, I would, I could have very easily just fallen into a shitty job doing shitty things and not know and had no idea that the, that there was more to the world out there. I went to college. I saw people doing spectacular things all around me. There were brilliant people everywhere. I was, uh, again, on the lower end of abilities when it came to knowledge, you know, network, family, whatever. When I, when I went to the Ivy League in, in Ithaca, New York, and um, I, learned, I learned what I could do. I learned the options and I learned that um, I wanted something more and that it was out there for me to take if I wanted it. I also learned how to be resourceful. I learned how to solve problems. I learned how to socialize. I learned how to communicate with people. I learned how to, um, through sports and th socially in college, I learned how to talk to people. I learned how to sell myself and my ideas. And that, that right there, the past 20 seconds of this podcast, that right there is what's valuable. I learned how to be resourceful. I learned how to socialize. I learned how to sell myself and my ideas. I learned how to be likable. I learned how to make friends. I learned how to add value to other people's lives. And that's stuff that you just can't learn anywhere else than going to a college campus and being in that environment. So yes, you're absolutely right that the lectures are antiquated. That the school coursework and the majors and the system is outdated and you can probably learn a hell of a lot more on YouTube than you can at almost any school in America. That being said, college isn't about the learning. College isn't about the lectures. College isn't about the curriculum. College is about, for me, college was about becoming a better person, growing as a human, seeing what's out there, and opening doors, and it did. It opened so many doors. I have so many great friends who are doing spectacular things all over the country. And I started my business in college. And if I would have went to college, I would have never started my business. I would never be buying self-storage facilities. I'd never have the opportunity and the life that I have right now. So people can shit on college all they want. And they can go online and say, college is outdated. College is worthless. The university system is broken. But I'm sending my kids to college. And they're going to be better off for it. And I am better off because I went to college. 
I went off and started my sweaty startup because I had that security of an Ivy League degree in my back pocket. I was able to go out and take risks because I had the security of, to fall back on of the network and the friends and the opportunity that my college offered me. Now, am I gonna try to send my kids to the Ivy League? Probably not. I think that the Ivy League is ultra competitive and I got very lucky to get in. What you have to do to get in nowadays um, far outweighs the value of the Ivy League, in my opinion, unless you can be an athlete and get in that way. I'm gonna send my kids to state school. I'm gonna send my kids to school with folks who socialize, with folks who have parties, with folks who go to class, with folks who learn, with folks who start businesses, with people who you can interact with, communicate with, socialize with. I'm gonna send my kids to a low cost state school, not a private school, not a community college, not an online school. You're gonna to go to campus and they're gonna get the experience because the experience is what taught me the most and what made me, turn me into the person that I am today.